When I found out that Lead Pages finally has their content builder out, I was so excited because I, we've, a lot of us have been waiting for this for, uh, well, a rather long time. It seems to be pretty powerful so far, and I only learned about this about half an hour ago, so I'm definitely no expert about it. But it does have some really cool features, and you can do some really great things with this thing so far, but it's not perfect. And like I said, I only found out about this about half an hour ago. So I'm gonna show you what I found out, what's working, what's not working, uh, you can, by the way, I'm quickly just running through this to show you some stuff uh, while I'm chatting here. Uh, but you can do some cool things. You have columns, lots of lots of column stuff. Um, and you can do some really cool things about this. Well, it's with this. So uh, let's jump in. I'll show you uh, how all this is working. And this is, by the way, a page I was starting to build out. But I was just so excited about this when I found out some extra features that are built in. So let's jump in. Let me show you, uh, I guess, uh, from the beginning, uh, from the interface to some of the back end stuff um, and, how, and how to even access it. So well, let's start there. So let's answer this question first. Uh, what is their drag and drop builder? Uh, and if you used Click Funnels, the Thrive Content Builder, Beaver Builder, the DV Builder, Flatsome Builder, whatever, you know, those drag and drop things or Visual Composer, you know, it's similar to this. You can drag and drop columns, rows, layouts. They call them widgets. Other people call them items, elements, modules. You can drag them into here and you can have stuff however you want it. So that is pretty cool. So that's what they've done. Previously, what we've had is we've had this. We've had this looks familiar. This is my uh, one of my original landing pages. Uh, we can change stuff. We can enable stuff, disable stuff, and that's about it. Um, so people were, were complaining about this a lot, and they finally came out with this. It's super awesome. Of course, here I'm using a different layout, so don't mind the difference in look. Um, and I think that's pretty cool. So let's start by showing you what is possible. First, you need to know that the layout works by having rows. Inside of rows, you have columns, and inside of columns, you have your widgets. You can't have a widget that's not inside a column, which is inside a row. Rows are well, kind of explanatory. You can call it a section, really. See this uh, kind of blue outline over here, up and down, and all around, in this uh, dark blue area? See that light blue border? That's the row. Inside the row, you can have columns. And you can have, I guess you can call them mini column rows because this is one row of a column of columns. It's kind of a weird way to describe it, I know. Uh, and, and another row. Um, but this builder isn't perfect. Uh, and I'll show you some issues uh, in just a second. But you can have one column, two column, three, four, five, six. Uh, six is kind of cool because then you can have uh, a lot of cool stuff. And now check this out. I only learned this while recording and I had to make a mistake, so I have to re record. Uh, but you can drag and resize columns the way you want it. And that's how they, This, by the way, this is the standard, uh, one of the standard drag and drop templates they give you. So this is not mine, this is just stuff I was using. But this is how they got these columns to be centered over here with some space on the side. You can take a column, whether it's the one column, two column, whatever, and you can resize it as you need to. To resize it, you have to go and find uh, you have to mouse over this little border between two columns and see those little three dots. I don't know if you can in the video, but right in the middle in the bar is three little dots. If you click and drag that, you can drag it almost where you want. You don't have pixel perfection options, but you do have preset areas to drag and drop, which is, uh, I think that's actually kind of good. It doesn't give you too much freedom, but enough freedom that it's useful. And see how I can drag and drop it and kind of just jumps. And those are your available positions, more or less. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and you have one, two, three, four, five, six column options available. Now, one thing you may have noticed is I'm kind of trying to click around here and nothing's happening, <laughs> which is not cool. But that's okay because this builder thing, the drag and drop beta, is in beta. So I'm going to reload this page um, and we can get back to it. All right, so back on track. Uh, let me first say one of the issues I've came up already with is with editing some of the uh, widgets here. As you can see, here's my text that I put in here. Um, you have some great options for it, and I'll go over those in just a sec. But as you can see, there's a lot of padding or margin down here, and I want to get rid of it. But I there's no way so far. It's really annoying because I don't want all that margin. I'm going to try a few other things. Hopefully, 
that can happen, but I'd want to get rid of that because that's just too much space. So we'll see how that goes. Now, in the text widget, we do have some really cool options. Um, we can change the general size, um, those types of things, which is actually really nifty. Uh, but this is my headline, so I might want it to make it nice and big. But after we already change the general size setting, we can have our own extra size setting, which is actually really, really nifty. Uh, and you can also change the amount of spacing, I guess padding it has in general. Um, for my use here, I kind of left it smaller. You can link the text, you can align it whichever way you want, bold and, and italic. And of course, colors. Now the fun part is that they've given us a whole bunch of uh, fonts to work with, and I kind of hope in the future they also give us some Google fonts to work with, because that'd be a nice little addition to here and it wouldn't slow things down, slow things down much. So that would be kind of useful. Now, other than the regular text widget, we have a headline. Very, very similar. Um, just waiting for that stuff to load. As you can see, like I said, it's uh, it's in beta. Some things don't always work. Uh, if I ever get that working, I'll show you what's going on. So anyway, there's that one. Text, it's, that's what this one is. This one's just plain text. We can have a button. Buttons are cool. So buttons, obviously, you have uh, general styles you can pick. Um, my personal preference is line. Whether you want it full width or not, um, style, size, fonts, you know, similar things. And of course, where you're going to link it to. Now, a little important part before uh, we continue. Whether you're linking text, an image, a button, whatever, you can link it to any URL you want, so any page, or you can use a lead box. Um, and I'll get to lead boxes later because, again, that also is new. This is why I got really excited previously. So we can have images. That's what my logo over here is. It's a little bit slow. Um, I really wish that they, because this is, it looks similar to the previous thing, nothing special there. Um, and they have the upload thing. You can just drag and drop here. But I wish they'd allow us to drag and drop onto this area here, which is kind of one less step and a little bit more intuitive, at least in the modern HTML web world. So hope they do that eventually. Uh, we can add a video, not too many options for those, but video is obviously big and originally, and you have to get your code in there. You can't upload it to lead pages. You'd have to host it somewhere like YouTube, Vimeo, uh, whatever you'd want. Now we can have a line. Lines are really fun. Nice little dividers. You can have some options for those. Custom HTML, a form. This is different than a pop-up form, by the way. This is a form already in here directly if you want that. Instead of having somebody like they usually have us do in lead pages in the training, you know, you go here, then you click, and then it shows that stuff. You can have the form directly on the page. Very, very useful. Now, forms just like uh, the other stuff, um, just like the lead boxes and the pop-ups, uh, we can have some options. What you see here on the left side is exactly what you're going to see on your, well, almost exactly what you're going to see on the lead box. You have two options to begin with. The what do you want, uh, how do you want to be notified, whether it's connecting it to a service such as MailChimp, uh, Aweber, whatnot, and what do you want, what information do you want from people and those settings for those things. For me, this is awesome because hidden fields, more content builders need to enable hidden fields for their forms. Um, so that's that part. You can add your uh, next fields. But then the fun part is the follow-up. What happens after they successfully sign up? Do you send them to a thank you page, to another URL, or do you send them a file? This one was a big selling point for lead pages. Really, really cool, all built in in one nice, easy to follow steps. Step one, step two, you're done. Sweet. Same thing for pretty much for the uh, lead pages box. That's your form, social share. Um, Kind of honestly, I don't know why people put those on landing page too much because that's too many actions. Personal preference, uh, so uh, your mileage may vary. Social likes, uh, you can edit what's going on over there. There we go. You can add what you need so far. It seems like Facebook honestly is the only one here. Uh, hopefully they add more. Um, so ah, image plus text, if you want to automatically have things next to each other. I know it's kind of hard to see, but the text is down there and the image is right here. And you can realign things how you need them to. 
like that. Um, or you could just do it with columns, you know, whatever floats your boat. And then you have calendar. Again, you can't, sorry, you can't see it uh, on this one too much. Let me drag that down into the lighter part of the page. Might be easier to see. There you go. Calendar stuff. And again, you have options. Where do you want the calendar to be? Let's click there. So again, if you saw, it's a little bit slow. Um, but you can play around all of these settings. It takes a little while sometimes to get all this stuff going. And let's delete that because I don't need that there. And last but not least, the, our favorite progress bar. Lead pages love this loves their progress bars. Usually you don't have this directly on the lead page unless, you know, this is video one, this is video two, the, you know, one of those types of uh, funnels. Uh, but usually we see this on the lead box. So that part's nothing new. We've, we all know how that one works. Um, layouts again was the columns. But to show you something interesting, we also have page styles. Kind of briefly went over, I think, uh, page width. The page width does not change the background uh, if you have a background image here, background call, it does not change that. This is just the content width. So let me show you what I mean. I prefer large because I like having some extra space. But if you have something thinner for all the content, not just for a section, for the whole thing, you can have medium and small. See how it kind of shrinks everything down? Like I said, my personal preference is the large. And if you don't want wide sections, turn that off. I like wide sections for the most part. Um, page background I haven't used, but for the image, but that would be the stuff you see over here when there is not an extra color added, like the dark blue here or here or the gray over here. Then that's when you would see this color or that image. Now, unlike previously where the SEO settings were a little bit hidden, they here they are over here on the left bar, the little up arrow thing. We click that, takes a little while to load. We can set the SEO title, description, keywords. Facebook sharing this for the open graph stuff. So um, Facebook doesn't always pick up the information we have in our content over here properly. So set your own image for almost all the time, your own title and description for anybody who shares. And if you're using Google Analytics or whatever other tracking software you want, other than what's built in into lead pages, add it here, of course. Now the tricky part. So let's close that because we don't need this. Now, the other Last part is pretty much what do you, you what do you do with these buttons? So if we click on link one of these buttons, we have lead boxes. Lead boxes, as we already know, is the thing that pops up. It looks a little bit different than what we had previously. Again, here we do have that awesome page builder. So we're not stuck into that one lead pages style pop up that we were always stuck with. We can do anything and everything we want here, which is really, really freaking cool. I'm super excited about it because sometimes I like this layout better. Um, and again, you can add a video here. I don't know, honestly, why you would add a video to a pop-up on a page already. But that's another story. Um, more kind of the same stuff we had previously. Headline, text, button, countdown, image, video, line, space, H custom HTML. Very useful. An extra form. This is where your form comes in. Image, text, calendar, and text, and progress bar. Like I said, here's your progress bar. For the progress bar, we don't have too many choices. Style, does, they don't really give us much. Um, completed whether you want it animated or not, and you want to show the value or not. We don't can't really change the style, but we can change the color, which is kind of nice, I guess. Um, so let's see what that does. Yeah, that changes the overall color there. The bar is the rest of this thing here. Let's change what that one to orange just to show you how, it's, how it works. There's that. And the text would be that stuff over there. Let's change that to blue. Who doesn't like blue? And see a little bug Have to click a little bit sometimes it's slower and there we go those are our settings there same thing for tech you know you can change the colors and styles for the text um, here we can change uh, these options a little bit um, honestly I'm still trying to figure out where I can change the button color it would be really really nice to change change those things um, I don't know where uh, the options here the this part the input field that's all right here this button, all I see is just change my text. I don't know where to change the button color, which would be really nice to change. Um, so that's, I guess, my little quick preview of the lead pages builder. What do they call it? The drag and drop. Yeah, the drag and drop lead pages content builder 
thing. <laughs> I think it's awesome. It needs some work still. It's a little bit slow. A few bugs here and there. It crashed on me once while recording this uh, preview session. Uh, I hope you're excited about it as I am. Now to show you finally how to actually access it. Um, let's see. So let's go out of this thing and let me show you how to access it. To access the drag and drop builder, and this is the stuff you mostly see, you have to click on templates, or if you click on new, you know, you'll see the same thing. You have to pick one of these designs. This is what we normally see, right? Well, here you can keep free checked, but click on drag and drop. If it says drag and drop up over here, that means one of these pre-made templates allows you to drag and drop stuff on it and change it as you want. So that is awesome. The one I was using was uh, this one. That's the one I'm changing on, you know, looks exactly similar. You know, I already changed it a bit up here, but that's what it is. Uh, just search for a drag and drop up here and make sure it's checked. Uh, you can uncheck uh, free if you want, because all of these are free so far. There's no paid ones so far uh, for the but for the built-in drag and drop builder and lead pages. So search for a drag and drop uh, or click this and you'll see all the ones that are available. Um, it's pretty cool so far. Uh, I like it. Uh, if you have any questions about this thing, uh, ask me. I'll be able to ask them. Pretty cool. This is the early access thing. So if it if you do access it and it breaks, uh, don't complain to me because <laughs> uh, they're still working on it. And I just learned about this. So I hope you like it and are excited about it, about it as much as I am because I've been waiting for this for such a long time. It's been one, also one of my complaints that we couldn't customize these things well enough. And now we finally can. It, it's super cool. So I hope you're excited because I know I am. Um, and let's see what you guys can come up with. If you have some great pages that you've created with this thing, post it in the comments and let us see what you guys made.